So in this video, we're gonna be breaking down the Ben TK video from an After Effects user's perspective. Hey guys, welcome back to Flatpak Effects. Now I've actually had a few of you already send me a few questions regarding this specific Ben TK Thailand video. And I thought in this, what we'd actually do is just break it down from the perspective of an After Effects user. Now, if you haven't checked out the video already, I highly recommend going and doing that first. And I've linked to that in the description below. Now, TK is a really talented online filmmaker. And if you haven't watched any of these videos before, I highly recommend checking those out. Now in this video, we're going to break it into a few separate parts and I'm going to talk through how I would actually go about approaching to remake some of these effects. Now the techniques that I'm going to talk through are not necessarily the techniques that he's used in his video, but I find with a lot of this stuff, there's always more than one way to actually go about it. And I really just wanna give you my perspective on how I would approach actually remaking some of these effects. And some of you might find this useful. Now one of the first things that I see a lot used in this video is the speed ramping effect. Now I already have a video on actually how to do this and I've linked to that in the description below. But you'll see in the video it's used a lot to really create that fluid motion of the camera moving through the scenes. Now a clever way of tying all these scenes together is through the use of transitions. Now there's no shortage of transitions in this video and a lot of them are very clever in the way they actually transition from one shot to the other. Now in particular with this shot here, you can see that he's actually using two shots where he's actually reversed or flipped this shot upside down and then he's blended into another shot here to create one overall shot. Now the other thing he's using here is he's using a speed ramping effect on this shot to then transition into this second shot here. Now also on that second shot, he's using a mask on the front of this fish and he's simply just using some keyframes to animate that across. Now a really easy technique to keep in mind when you're actually filming your clips is to always keep the camera moving. Now you'll notice in a lot of these shots, the camera is consistently moving. And for a lot of the stuff, he's either using a drone or he's using a handheld stabilized gimbal, like a DJI Ronin S or something similar. And you'll notice that he's always moving the camera from one thing to another. Now this might be going behind an object or it might be going from establishing shot to something up close. What this allows then is when you actually put this into the computer, you've got a lot more options and your transitions are gonna look a lot better because you've really got something more to work with than just transitioning from a straight wide shot. Now again, in particular with this fire shot, he's using a really clever transition from where he's creating smoke to then moving behind the clouds. So it's just as important to get into the right mindset when you're shooting these clips as it is to actually know how to do this inside the computer. So you can see he's transitioning really cleverly from the smoke into the clouds up here. So he's also probably exaggerated this by overlaying some digital smoke to really help that transition. Another really clever technique is where he's using a close up of this elephant and then transitioning into a statue of an elephant. Now a simple way to do this is by using masks and then actually using the puppet tool to actually animate and drag the edges of that mask out. He's actually modified the statue to line up with the actual elephant and then he's just created some keyframes to animate that back into place and it comes across as a really effective transition. The other thing you can see here is he's got this really nice transition into this stonework on the ground and you can see that he's come up with a really clever way of animating the bricks and the stonework to almost create like a portal style opening. So he's probably just gotten to this point and freeze frame the camera and then he's just created a bunch of masks to actually cut out the bricks there and then he's masked those as its own ring and just using some simple rotation keyframes. Then he's just using some simple 3D camera moves to actually move through that scene and then transition into his second shot. Now again, the techniques actually used here, although they're not overly complicated, 
they're just used really, really well because he's thought about actually how these shots are gonna transition from one to the other. So if you wanna make transitions like this, you've really got to start to think about actually how you're gonna transition and the shots that you're actually going to use to transition between. Now, one transition in particular that I got a lot of questions about was this transition through the tattoo and actually how did he make it? Now, there could actually be a few ways he's gone about this, but a really basic breakdown of how this is actually working is just by using a series of masks and then using the Saber plugin to actually create the fire outline. Now the first part of the shot is quite straightforward. He simply just masked over the top of that tattoo and then applied that Saber plugin to get the fire outline. Now when it actually comes to the tunnel, it gets a little bit more complicated. Now over in After Effects, what I've simply done here is just created a new solid, and then I've just grabbed my pen tool and just created a simple triangle-based mask. Then what I've done to that is I've simply just applied the Saber plugin, and I've made those layers 3D. Then I've just created a simple 3D camera, which has some position keyframes and a rotation keyframe for the Z axis. I've added some motion blur and I've just simply stacked all of those layers in one continuous tunnel. And you can see just from a little bit of work here, we've already started to create something that's kind of similar to what he has in the video. Now, obviously what he's done here would have taken quite a long time and he's really gone through in quite a lot of detail to get this really impressive looking effect. Now for the transition out, he's also created a mask over the top of his video footage. And then again, he's applied the Sable plugin to those masks and then just simply faded them out. Now also to exaggerate that movement, the camera is also moving through the scene, which could have been shot on a DJI Ronin. Now at that time, it's possible he may not have known actually what he was going to do with that shot. But again, all of these things by moving the camera, transitioning behind objects just gives you a lot more options and can really make the difference between good effects and just average effects. So there you go guys, there's a bit of a breakdown on TK's video. If you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. You can also check out more videos over at flatpackeffects.com. Thanks for watching guys and I'll catch you in the next video.